Hey guys, my name is Simone, this is Simone Says, and I've noticed that a few of you guys have slid into my DMs asking questions about the video that I made a few months ago on my journey to optometry school. Remember, there are two parts. I'll link them in the cards above and in the description box down below. If you haven't watched that, you can watch it after this video because I feel like there's quite a bit of information in there as well. But since I've had a few people reach out to me in the past few months since that video has gone live, I wanted to share with you guys some of the advice that I gave the people that asked me those questions. This is my experience, so my advice is gonna be based off of my experience. I'm not, I'm not ever going to try and answer a question that I don't know the answer to. Like somebody asked me about boards I haven't taken boards yet so I don't know and I'm gonna say that if I don't know the answer to something I'm gonna say I don't know so I have five questions to answer and they will be split into like chapters um, or timestamps in the time bar right here as well as in the description box and I think I'm also gonna leave it in the comments uh, in the comment section but I do want to make this a series on my channel so this is gonna be episode number one and as you guys ask me more questions I'm going to compile them and continue to do more videos like this that way more people can Find this video if you guys find it helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below your engagement allows for this video to be pushed and help more people and that is literally the point of this video so since we do not have time to waste time let's get into it so one of the questions that i got was what was some of the criteria that you were looking into when applying to schools and I'm gonna be very very honest with you guys, the very first thing that I looked at was tuition. If you guys didn't know, I'm Canadian, so that makes me an international student. Now, some schools, depending on if they're private or if they're public, will charge more if you're an international student, and some schools don't. Thankfully, SELS is not one of those schools, but even still, I have to consider the currency exchange rate. Tuition was on average $40,000. Some schools were like 50,000, some schools were a little bit less, but on average, it was around 40,000, I would say. Now, 40,000 USD, Hold on. What is $40,000 USD in CAD? It's 48,520 Canadian dollars. That is over $8,000 more in tuition for four years. So multiply that by four, and then add the same idea on fees for books, equipment, living expenses, rent, groceries, phone bill, internet bill, any expense that you could possibly think of. It's gonna be so much more expensive. It adds up, it really does. So I had to consider what school was not gonna charge me an arm and a leg for tuition because I still have to pay for all these other things and then consider the currency exchange rate. Another thing that I considered was crime rates and climate. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm not. I grew up in a suburb and I wasn't about to pick up my life and move myself to a city, especially if I did not know what that area was like. People that live there know the area, know how to get around, know how to move in that space, but I don't. So it just didn't make any sense for me to just get up and move into a city. Also, I'm not used to hurricanes, floods, forest fires, tornadoes. I'm not used to those things. So I kind of wanted to make sure that where I was going was going to be similar to where I was at the time. Now, after I looked at all of those things, I then looked into NBEO pass rates. Now, I know everyone says, you know, boards is not the be all and end all, but for me and the way I look at things, I need to get it it's step by step. I can't plan for a future if I don't pass boards and I need to make sure that the school that I'm going to is going to prepare me for that. That's just the way that I look at things. I then looked at the different kinds of requirements in terms of coursework. I realized that American schools also required organic chemistry too, which I did not have, which is a part of the reason why I took um, a second, an, an extra year in my undergrad. I looked at their GPA requirements. My grades weren't, they weren't amazing, but they were decent. I looked at their minimum requirement for OAT scores. And the two things I would say about GPA and OAT, if they say they have a minimum, don't focus on the minimum. Focus on what, or take into consideration what the previous class average was for their GPA, because the minimum can be a 3.0. And you might have a 3.3, but everyone else has a 3.5 that's applying. Unless the rest of your application looks amazing, they have a better chance, if that makes sense. And I would say the same goes for the OAT. My grades weren't amazing, but I did decent. I also looked into what they were offering the students as well. So some schools had their students in clinic and seeing patients um, a lot earlier than other schools. Some schools had clubs that other schools didn't. Some schools gave their students different kinds of experiences that other schools wouldn't. For example, like private practice club is a club that's at my school and 
uh, it's a way for students to understand that side of optometry if they are considering open up their own practice. So the next question is, you applied to 10 schools, what were they? I do not quite remember all the schools that I did apply to, but I'm on futureidoc.org on my laptop and I'm gonna show you guys the list that they have here. There are 23 optometry schools in the States and if you guys didn't know, I am a third year optometry student and I'm Canadian, so there is only one optometry school scratch that one english speaking optometry school in all of canada it's on the east coast it's called waterloo so once i got rejected from them i'm like okay i gotta go somewhere in the states but we're gonna go through this list and see if i can jog my memory on which ones i did apply to so based on this list i did apply to midwestern in glendale arizona i applied to scco in california i did apply to nova southeastern in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I don't remember which one, but I know that I applied to one of these two schools in Chicago. I do not remember. I did apply to the New England College of Optometry. That's actually the other school that I was accepted to. If you can hear all the noise outside, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure I applied to Michigan. I'm not 100% sure. I think I applied to SUNY or SUNY, whichever one, the one in New York. And that was actually one of the schools that was that had the highest tuition. It was really, really expensive at the time. I think I applied to Ohio. Obviously, I applied to Salas. And I think that is it for the schools that I applied to. I'll put a total on the screen. I feel like I'm wrong. I'll leave a link to Future Eye Doc in the description box down below so you guys can check it out for yourself if you want to. But realistically, I should have been applying to schools that were closer to the border because it would have been quite expensive going back and forth. But at the time, I'm just like, I need to get into somewhere. So I got quite a few questions on living arrangements. Now, each school is a little bit different. Some schools are, some optometry schools are within a bigger school. Some schools are just the optometry school on its own. I know that NECO is completely just the optometry school. Salas has other grad programs within the school. Some optometry schools are within a bigger university. So there might be on-campus living and there might be off-campus living. Salas is not one of those schools, but there are complexes that are near the school and that's where most of the students Students will live. Another thing that the school does is provide like a little database kind of where you can find all the different apartment complexes that are available for students to apply for to live in. I do highly suggest that if you can go to the area around the school and kind of scope out the area for yourself instead of just going based off of what's online. And then another thing that they had was Facebook groups so students would connect on Facebook and then decide to be roommates or not and then decide where they want to live from there. One guy straight up even asked me what was your GPA and your OAT scores? He was respectful about it. I don't remember my GPA scores. But as for my OAT, I wasn't doing anything phenomenal. I didn't do anything crazy. I was around average. I did take the OAT twice. The first time I took it, it was $390. And the second time I took it, it was $450. Remember, that is in USD. So it's a lot more Canadian. And the reason why I took it twice is because the first time I took it, the science was really good, but the math and the reading was just was I didn't practice. That was probably the main thing is that I didn't practice it because it's one thing to know how to read it and like do math, but it's another thing to know how to do it under a time limit, under pressure, all that kind of stuff. So I took it twice for that reason mainly. And I would definitely say that it was beneficial for me because when I was interviewing at Salas, they told me that they take the highest grade from each category. When you do that, my grades look great. So I wouldn't suggest taking it like six times to make sure that you get like a good grade each time. If you feel like you could have done better and you have the means to do so I'm just saying I have no regrets from taking it twice. Another thing that I want to tell you guys about is the OAT partial waiver fee. Partial, no. The OAT, <laughs> the OAT partial fee waiver. If the deadline has not passed, I'll probably try to leave a link to it in the description box down below. If you guys can find that and if you qualify for it, make sure to sign up for it because I feel like it is so helpful. It's just one less expense for you to think about, so why not? Now, the last question that I'm going to answer is about preparing for interviews. I think my biggest piece of advice, and this is probably my advice for most things, and this means a lot coming from me because I am your friendly ex-introvert. Like, I wasn't the most outgoing, but I've learned to become a little bit more outgoing, so I would definitely say my biggest piece of advice would be to be confident. Even if they ask you a question that you don't exactly know how to answer, when you finally do come up with the answer and you're still a little bit shaky about it, don't deliver it with a lot of ums and ahs and the uh. Be confident with your answer. If you show that you're unsure about yourself, they're gonna be unsure about you. My second piece of advice when preparing for an interview would be to prepare answers to the most frequently asked questions 
for example, tell me about yourself. In my head, I don't think of that as a, like a trick question. I don't think of that as a trick question. I think of it more as a conversation starter. It just takes the weight off of the question and just makes it a lot easier for me to answer. So those are the two main pieces of advice that I would give you. If you guys want me to make a whole video on how I prepared for my interview, let me know in the comment section down below and I'd be glad to do that video if you found this video helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below that increases the engagement so that this video can be pushed to more people and help as many people as possible that is literally the point of my videos i have no problem with you guys sliding into my dms if you have any questions after watching this video please feel free to let me know follow me on instagram and just go ahead and ask away i try my best to answer my dms as quickly as possible you'll probably either get a dm or like text form or a voice note because it just makes it a little bit easier for me to explain things to you. But if you made it this far in the video, don't forget to comment down below, hashtag made it. That is it, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that post notification. That way you're notified when my next video goes live. And until next time guys, stay hydrated, stay motivated, stay motivated and mind your business. I'll see you guys in the next one, bye guys. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-